Hi, welcome to a video. It's been a long time since I've done one. Um, this one is, well, I've had a delivery. Let me show you what it is. I'm sure as most people know, who have seen these before, this is one of these cheap Chinese diesel heaters. So, there's a heater itself. All pretty standard. Right, just before I start getting into this video, I want to make it perfectly clear, I am not um, an expert in this, and this is all my own DIY. Right, so the problem with this motorhome is, is a lack of under seat storage, um, because we've got onboard water tanks here, so there's only really the two seats, um, the passenger seats where the kids sit in the back, when they come with us, and we have the side bench seat which has got the Truma heater in it um, so we're looking at fitting a diesel heater just simply because you know we use a lot of gas because we are away all year round um, so I'll show you where I think I'm going to fit this right so what I've decided is at the back of the motorhome where the bunk beds are um, we have this step uh, which serves only a purpose for the ladders and where the fridge is we have a panel which is only held on by four screws which I've removed already so once you pull this panel out there's an air gap at the bottom gently does it right so with the panel removed We've got a hot and cold pipe here. If I took them out of the way, um, you might be able to see I've already drawn on the floor where the heat is going to go. And then all we do from there is I've removed the covers, the screws. You have to remove the other covers going around the edge. They're only like capping bits. Take out this vent. I've already had all this out anyway. Um, the only thing I do struggle with, because on my driveway it's not level, everything wants to close the cupboard door. So, we have to remove this step here. And doing that, the only way you can do it is lift it up into the cupboard and then you've got enough room to tilt it out so the idea is I've picked another t-section up so I'll cut the pipe across here put a t-section on there and then we'll follow a new pipe around under through that one there connecting into the diesel heater here and there's plenty of ventilation underneath here which goes straight to the outside as well. Not only that, there is obviously air gaps under there. That's a complete air vent under there, which then follows through underneath all the shower tray. So there's absolutely loads of ventilation. So, right, let's uh, see about getting the, uh, the holes cut out first. Right, so what I've done, this is the plate that comes with it. I've marked out on the floor where I'm going to need to do the holes. Um, these are going to be the holes for the exhaust and the vent. They do need to be made bigger than that. Obviously heat transferring. Um, I'm going to do a pilot hole just to double check underneath, but we should be good. And then when the exhaust drops down, I'm going to drop it in front of the wheel arch. So that way, um, when we're driving, it's not constantly being sprayed with you know, dirt and stuff off the road. Take a pilot hole through just to double check. <laughs> Terrifying how easy they go through. <laughs> right, I should go under the van and check, but we I've already measured it out anyway, and I know I'm pretty good, but just for safety, we'll go and check. Right, I'm underneath the van now, so I'll just drop the drill bit through. So we've got loads of clearance there. Like I say, I can bring it out just in front of the wheel arch. So it should be quite good. And then we can move the air, the air intake towards the back 
facing backwards because you don't want that facing forwards filling full of rubbish. Right, I've gone for a 57 millimeter hole cutter, which should be sufficient. I may have to cut from underneath because I'm getting the drill in. So, we've done the two holes now. So, plate is there. I've got to attach that to the bottom of the heater. What I should do with there is once it's all done I'm going to use heat resistant silicon just to coat all that to protect the insulation so any heat that passes through there it won't uh, affect the insulation right I'm going to fit this uh, bottom plate so it's just worth to know as well that there is a rubber piece just there to stop the heat transferring down so when it's sat on the floor so theoretically this plate shouldn't get too hot theoretically i was going to put the uh, fuel cap on there so what i'm going to do is fix these bolts on right one thing it is worth to know and i've seen other people say about this is when you get these and they've been made in china and shipped all the way from china just unscrew the air intake take the top off and just make sure the fan is not catching at all because apparently sometimes when they're moving about they can catch and rub so for a couple of seconds before it's fitted just check that all installed this panel should then go back on like so this panel should just go straight back in and you won't even know the heat is there like I say there's all air intakes under there there's air intakes in the floor of the motorhome under here as well so plenty of fresh air coming in Also, a side note, if you're not if you've got one of these motorhomes, it'd be an absolutely great place if you put this on magnetic catches because it's good fit anyway, but brilliant place to hide a safe. Right, so fo so far the heat is in. Uh, I did have to wiggle it to one side slightly just to get around there. So the pipe's in there and it's coming out there. And then what I'm gonna do, I've brought another trimmer. T fitting um, that was £4.99 so not bad from Kimberley Caravans I think what we're going to do is we're going to fit the T there so that all T's into it and then there's a slight difference in the pipes so what I've found that seems to do the job perfect is rainwater drain pipe so that will fit really snugly into the trimmer so we can screw that into place that's lovely and it also fits that way nicely into there so we can fix that into place so two of these a little bit of pipe in between and then we're going to be connected right I just need to find some pipe. Right, so I've got all that put together for now. Um, I probably will get some more actual duct in, but to get it up and running for now, I've just used the bit of drain pipe. It's all new, no second hand drain pipe. And I put a bit of chrome tape around it all just to help with the, um, make sure there's no hot air lost. So let's get it all put back together. Right, and that is that step all put back together now. 
Like I say, the heat is under there. So all I've got to do now is connect the electrics up, uh, locate the fuel tank, but I'll go through that probably tomorrow because it's pitch black outside. Right, I've now fitted the diesel heater. Um, so I'm going to give it a bit of a, a test, uh, see how it performs. I'm going to put it on for about an hour, measure the temperatures, what it is in here now, um, and see how it does in an hour. So I'll just quickly show you. So the diesel heater is fitted below the fridge there, obviously with the air vents. I have picked up another vent over there where you can't close it. So that's that. So it's teed into all of those. And then it should filter back round into the other vents, which are down here um, and everywhere else around the motorhome. So, right, let's let's turn this diesel heater on. I don't know if we can actually see that. Yep. On. There you go. It's starting to turn around. It'll do its thing now, and then we'll leave that for about an hour. I will quickly take a uh, screenshot on my phone now off the Truma heating and see how it goes for the next hour. Right well I've just come back into the motorhome after about an hour from it being you know freezing cold sat on the driveway. It does feel a lot warmer in here, not quite warm enough yet though. Uh, we've got a reading of 11 degrees on the Truma but interestingly what it is also doing is it's heating the hot water so we're 23 degrees at the moment all right just in fairness what i've done i've left it another hour um while well, i've been to pick harry up and we're up to 15 degrees in temperature in here and the water temperature is up to 30 degrees so i'm completely convinced once we're out using it driving from place to place it will be able to keep everywhere topped up running costs will be a lot lower than it is on gas and also we're not going to have a problem finding diesel whereas at the moment we're finding bottles of gas because we use both Cala and we also use um, flow gas. Cala's easier to find but then again it's harder to find any stockists that got it in in at the moment um, whereas you know the stockists that uh, have flow gas are a lot harder to come by. So. Overall, I'm quite happy with it, but we're going to go away February half term and give it a proper test. Um, I'll do an update after that. Right, well, thanks for watching this video. I hope it's been some help, um, and I'll see you again on the next one.